her troll is there again. This bitch. I want to figure out a way to get rid of her forever. You know, from this fucking you know what, yeah. trolls? Fuck you. So fuck you. So so here we'll say like uh, we're out here risking our fucking lives. So this guy I Stanley know. Furman, these this guy Stanley Furman is like um fuck you. He's a uh, uh no my show's live now. He, Um, I think maybe like let's go to the to the like magistrate and the no bond and and the you know no real specific charges against me. Um, I was uh after I was kind of had that uh, um you know rough ride down to the to the uh place where and it's definitely not a magistrate because under the Virginia Virginia Constitution a magistrate has to be amenable to the people at all times. And this, this, they were doing the opposite. So we got in there. The the guy, uh, you know, started making references and and you know, acting like he's my buddy, and then you know, doing a you know, playing playing another cop off of one another, and all this other BS. And then we get into the magistrate's office, and the guy doesn't remember what happened. I point, I pointed that out. Uh, because he said that he immediately handcuffed me, and I told him no because he didn't have his handcuffs, and he had to wait for uh, uh, another guy to show up with handcuffs. And uh, um, he said, "Oh yeah, that's right. My brain's not working tonight." And uh, right during right during this this hearing, and uh, um, and there are no specific charges. Is exactly what I did that I was. Videotaping and these in, these guys, and that I was yelling and screaming and making a scene. That's what they said, uh, and cursing and threatening. And I told them exactly the only thing that I remember that could have possibly been misconstrued as a threat by an idiot or 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 someone who is attempting to take something the wrong way, like uh, um uh. What? No, like um, what's the what was the guy um Steve Skinner the uh, the guy who set me up at City Hall who when he started going after me he said are you pointing at your gun and I'm like no that's that's the kind of thing are you th yeah because I certainly wasn't making any threat but these guys kept saying are you threatening me and I kept saying no but you know and, and uh, um and so. That that went on, and uh, um, uh, so they didn't really have any charges. And I'm like, oh, you know. And they say four charges. They threw out the obstruction of justice charges because even the magistrate, you know, wasn't gonna like, you know, put her name behind like saying somebody's obstructing right. justice when there was no actual crime and there was no even suspicion that a logical person would think that there's you know, some sort of crime going on. Like, it's all on camera, and the video camera, like, completely shows exactly what happened. Unfortunately, they and took it. Th that's why they took it. That's yeah, why they exactly. took the evidence. Because the last time, they had to let me go because they were in possession of the camera. Mm -hmm. Somebody else was in possession of the camera, and there were six to eight cameras on the entire event the whole time. It wasn't just mine. Mine just got the best shots. Um, because it was happening to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, uh, but, uh, um, she said she didn't like the way, she, since she didn't like the way I answered her questions, and she didn't like the fact that I stated my employees and my place of work at Virginia State Capitol, uh, and, uh, uh Press TV America, uh, Taylor, you know, and the location is, uh, um, the CBN building in Washington, D.C., and um, Tehran, Iran. Yeah. And that I go on, uh, that, that my, my job is, uh, I make movies, I make YouTube videos, because this is, this is uh, uh, one of the things that, that, that I, I want to touch back on this just real quick, because the, the fire department, 
uh, guys as they were harassing me, which I don't care, I was getting it all on video, they kept insulting me and said, what do you do? What's your job? And I, I said, this is my job. That's what I get paid for. It's my, and even if I didn't get paid, that would still be my work. And even if it wasn't my work, it would always be my right to film. Yes. And to and to what you know and to question the government. Well, we uh, getting to press TV. We uh, were. Oh, we and, and 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 also on TV. I was on TV the uh, three times in the past uh, two months, and the basically all I hit on press TV in those three appearances, which are well documented, a lot of folks have seen it. A lot of folks have seen it worldwide. And I start stating that the police are a armed military force, an occupying military force, that they are out of control, that they act in an unconstitutional manner, that they are corrupt in every way, and the the way they get they get they get away with this is because the judicial system is one hundred percent corrupt and fraudulent and it's nothing but a kangaroo court. Yep. And they need to and it has absolutely no legitimacy. It doesn't have any legitimacy. The, the, the cop told me he was stealing my camera because he was protecting my Fourth Amendment right. That is a quote from him. This guy, this guy um, Bates, who described himself as Bates, like Norman, stated he was protecting my Fourth Amendment rights by stealing my camera. He did say that. And, uh, um, and now he's, he's securing your, your, your body by taking your weapon. And he's securing my body. And yeah, uh, he also said that, you know, hey, your, your health is our number one priority as he is taking injuring, after he's, injuring, as he's injuring me, as he's injuring me. And he tells me how he loves hunting and fishing and, and do I love hunting and fishing and, you know, all this other stuff. And I get what he's saying. I get what he's saying. But it's real cowardly. I mean, these guys, as Chris Lindsay pointed out earlier, they're real cowardly. But that's why I get these guys to do it. Because I'm going after their bosses. And I'm proving that their bosses are 100% criminals. And they ha so they have to sick their... Um, sick their rabid dogs on on me and uh it's a good thing that i'm you know i'm not a big i'm not a big man uh as far as my stature goes but i am tough and resilient i've taken a lot of beatings in my life so it it prepared me for it prepared me for uh, uh this uh, um assault on my uh, uh god-given and constitutional rights because you know, that's the way the state operates. That's what, the way this unconstitutional government operates. So they said they, they, uh, they didn't like the way I referred to the entities that I work for because I kept it. Not that any of this stuff is their business. Not that who I work for or where I live has anything to do with anything. And, uh, you know, where I live is of no secret to the, you know, Richmond City yeah. government. And they anyway, find him rather well, don't they? I mean, they know exactly where I am at all times. But, but uh, um, that, no bond was set. So I immediately went down to the Richmond City Jail where I uh, ran into the intake officer who, of course, knew me. I don't, he said he hadn't seen the video uh, that Amanda took. Uh, Amanda G. Williams took um, of the uh, uh, end of the, you know, beat down incarceration, uh, abduction, I should say, kidnapping, but more accurately, abduction. No, kidnapping because of the ransom. Yeah, the ransom. Back, yeah, abduction sorry. and kidnapping and ransom. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you're on. Okay, you're on. I'm here. Yeah, I almost got arrested. I almost got arrested for filming inside the uh, jail, and I told I I told him, um, you know, I said you're filming me, and he goes, your camera is kind of um um is what did he say? They were threatened by my camera. 
Yeah, he didn't like yeah. what you were he doing. He didn't like what I was doing, and I was threatened by my camera. Well, the first one came up, and she, the lady came up, the Bush lady, and she comes up to me, and she goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm filming an incident. No, what are you doing? I said, I'm filming an incident. She goes, in here? I said, yes. She goes, what? I said, yes. And then she left. And, um, and she did not tell you to stop. Yeah, she didn't tell me to stop. And then the big black guard came up and told me, you got to get out. And I said, what? And he goes, you got to get out. So I started backing out the door. And he goes, you can't have cameras in here. And I was, that's when I started. I walked out the door and there was this big droid on the side of the building. And I go, what's that? That's a camera. If my camera's threatening you, what's that one doing? You're, that one's threatening me. And then he's, well, you... Are you still there? Yeah, yeah that was kind of waiting. Um, and then he go, you know, he, I was outside this time. I said, well, I'm outside, so go back in. You know, and then he kind of walked back in. I don't know what happened after he got back in there because I shot video outside that's up on YouTube and on my uh, Facebook page. So, yeah, that, that was, that's another thing. I, I, I want to hit on the threats inside the hospital room, too, because, um, after after a little discussion, you know, all the intake officers knew uh, knew what was coming, knew I was coming down. But uh, um, I'm get a copy of that. so uh, I have the so she has it. We're uh, um we're 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 going. Uh, they gotta they gotta check they gotta check you know everybody's health and, and very very you know not not very thoroughly, but uh, um uh, or not very uh, competently, I should say. But uh, after, clearly I was injured, um, on the way in, uh, the nurse asked me if I was injured. I said, well, of course. Yeah, I'm injured. And then I say, head, you know, back, shoulders. And then I just, I just, you know, lifted my shirt down, not even a couple inches because I, you know, ripped my shirt off, which, you know, ripped my, you know, or stretched my shirt, I should say, to be mo most exact. You know, so it was just kind of hanging off my shoulder, and uh, she took one look, and she immediately said, "Take him to take him to VCU Medical Center." And the guy's like, "We'll be right back. We'll be back in like you know two minutes. We'll be back. They're not even gonna look at him. They're gonna take it, take one you know one look at him, and and they're gonna send him back because they know he's a liar. And that's when they started injuring me more. And when I got in there, there were two of two uh, uh, of this guy's." Uh, um, uh, Bates superior officers and what they did was give me threats. They gave me death threats in there. They gave me death stares and threats saying, we know you're a liar. We're going to stick you away for five years. We're going to get you on Project Exile. We're going to, and I'm like, man, you're not going to intimidate me. I'm getting, you know, yeah, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Everybody knows about this. Yes, they threaten you all the time. Yes. Yeah, they were definitely. Especially when they're off camera. They're, well, I don't know if there's a camera. Well, actually, in the, yeah, in the hospital, in the hospital room, yeah. yeah, there's so, no cameras. So, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely yeah. get that. But yeah, they were definitely threatening me in there. Um, you know, insulting me for uh, you know, ask me, have you ever played football before? Come on, you know, uh, you know that's. You know, you, you folks sit their head on the ground playing football all the time. And I'm like, yeah, well, they're wearing a, you know, a helmet. You know, I'm not wearing a helmet, and you're, and it's also illegal in football to smash somebody's head on the ground. That'll get you kicked out of the game. You don't play football like this guy was, you don't stick your knee in folks' back, even though they have pads. You don't continuously slam their head to the ground. Uh, he has a record of uh, assaulting folks wrongly and having charges thrown out for violating Fourth Amendment rights. Yes. You think, hey, you think these guys are all Freemasons? Yeah, they're definitely most of them. Yes, yes, they all are. All police are, are, are the Blue Lodge Freemasons. Yes. The Prince of Yes, thank you. They are, and, and yes, they are associated with the you know judicial the judges but you know freemasonry that's just that's 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 you know that's just a small part of the all that's you know that's that's a that's a base level of the hermetic code we're we're a little uh, we're a little higher uh, up on the on the um on the ladder than the uh, than these guys these guys are they're mostly just satanists they're mostly sadistic satanists who uh, uh, have, have a, yeah 
definitely say say this. But you know, I mean, what, you know, what's what's the devil? You know, and I'm speaking. I'm a Jungian uh, as far as uh, philosophy and uh, uh, psychological thought. But you know, just just the code of the devil. You know, in, in popular you know folk mythology, is is the devil is the lie, the devil is the opposite of the truth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So basically, yeah, they just you know. They're the, they are on the base, and they are, they are the joke and the slaves of the real masters, which are the owners of the banks, which is who we really go out yeah, and we, we, we cover all that. Let's we'll stick back to yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I want to yeah. touch on one thing real quick. When I was in, when I was filming, and they gave me all the crap in there, everybody had their cell phone with a camera on it, and most people were probably filming it. So right. I want to know what I was doing wrong, other than I had my press pass on, and they go, oh, and I said, yeah, I know what I'm doing wrong, and I would specifically made that video right in front of their droid to show them I'm not afraid of them, and to show them this is what's going on. Um, you know, it, it, it's just, you're recording us, and then you tell us we have to listen to you tell us that, that's that's you know. like the basis of everything that that was that was going on. They 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 say like you know they're all walking around heavily armed and you know for your they're they're, they're, uh, they're um you know stripping us naked and uh, uh, getting us to perform you know uh, uh, you know uh, humiliating you know uh, uh, sexual assault acts. They're sexually assaulting and abusing us, and they're armed. And the only reason they do that is because they they can, and you know nobody can stop it. And that's I did file uh, charges and complaints for um, violations of my uh, you know uh, being persecuted for my political beliefs, which is a violation of Virginia law. Being uh, persecuted for my sexual orientation, which is I'm a heterosexual male, and I was. Uh, sexually assaulted by countless men and sexually abused, and I would call it rape when uh, uh, when uh, um, when uh, I'm uh, forced to perform degrading acts like uh, like in uh, Abu Ghraib prison or uh, in uh, uh, Guantanamo Bay by these guys uh, uh, turning around in circles, sticking my tongue out, squatting while naked, you know, multiple times. You know, and I don't have to do it once, I don't have to do it twice, I don't have to do it three times, and every time I'm saying, you're sexually assaulting me. This is a violation of the law. Of the law. You're, you're, you're engaged in sexual abuse, and uh, uh, you're a rapist. So that's what I'm saying to all these folks. It, no matter what, what you say, you don't get any enjoyment out of it, or what, you're a rapist. There's nothing but rape. Every single person who goes into that, uh, uh, that jail is raped. Every one of them, and and for me it was multiple times. So, so uh, um, I, I was immediately threatened uh, to be killed as soon as I went into a cell with uh, uh, a, uh, a cell in, in the Richmond City Jail, and then also threatened to be killed at, at the uh, um, at the uh, by an inmate uh, at both at both places. Uh, the first guy was uh, uh, within ten minutes. Uh, uh, we were buddies and uh, we were praying together. Two places. Okay. So okay. Places. So so I was after oh during during the uh, uh, during the hearing the kangaroo court hearing uh, I found out that they had dropped three of the four charges and I was uh, told that I must you know do a bunch of things and that uh, um, that then when I said I'm not guilty of anything and I I explained that. All oh, this is a fabrication, and my property has been stolen, and there's video evidence of all this. The judge responds by saying, "I will hold off on that because there's a room full of witnesses right here against you." And I said, "Well, uh, I didn't do anything wrong, and I'm not guilty of anything." And then he says, "We're going to set the bail at five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollar bail for one." Misdemeanor charge. It's not even really a misdemeanor. It's not even a misdemeanor that they absolutely have fabricated in every way. Five thousand dollars is a lot of money to come up with, and giving a bail bondsman money is stupid money. That's throwing your money away. Um. So we had to come up with five grand. Did you have to pay five thousand dollars? 
$5,000? Yes. yes. We had to pay $5,000. It's on the video on my uh, thing of Amanda taking it out of the bank. I mean, we they gave us the runaround, and then they played hide the Chris from us. Oh, yeah. That, that. Actually, maybe I would like to talk about Okay. 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 Amanda, Amanda, Amanda will do this. Okay, so I would like to just talk about the bail itself. Um, the night when Chris was arrested, we, Glenn and I had been trying to find him most of the night, um, going back and forth between justice centers, making phone calls, trying to find him. No one had him booked anywhere. So I didn't even hear from him until about one in the morning when he was allowed to make his phone call. And when his bail was set at nine in the morning for the $5,000, we didn't hear about that until several hours yeah, later. later. Um, I bet he said at 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, we didn't hear we about, didn't hear about that. On Thursday morning. Right, and we didn't hear about that until several hours later. Yeah. The original abduction happened at, at between 6 and 7, I think, on... On, oh, no, between 7 and 8 on, on uh, Wednesday night. Sorry. Yes. yes. So, um, anyways, getting back to that, I had been speaking with uh, his parents because... Um, you know, as, as many supporters as Chris has, not many people had $5,000 to help me out with. So, um, you know, I was speaking with them in contact with them, trying to get the payment straight. She was also calling the jail, um, trying to get directions as to how to pay the bail. Um, so she was told to make a money order or a cashier's check out to Richmond's Sheriff's Office, not Richmond City Jail, Richmond Sheriff's Office, which I have thought is unusual the whole time. But so I went to my bank after the money has been wired, which is a difficult process to wire that much money immediately. Yeah. You are really just waiting on technology to show that these numbers are here. I get the check all made out at the bank. As soon as I get out of the bank, I have a feeling I need to call the jail, verify that Chris is there, and head on over there. Well, as soon as I call the jail, um, a woman answers the phone, and I say, hello, I'm looking to uh, make sure that an inmate is still there. His name is Dorsey, and I started spelling his last name. She then interrupted me and said, oh, do you mean Christopher? And I said, well, yes, I do. His first name is Chris. And she said, well, he's not here. And I said, well, where is he? And she said, he's not here, and just hung up the phone. So then I'm on a goose chase yet again to find where is Chris. Still um, game. At this point, I go back into the Still bank goes. and let them know I can't use this anymore. This is no good. Uh, I need it back in my account. The lady at the bank then tells me at that point that the money will not show back up into my account until midnight which was actually inaccurate the money really shows up around three in the morning or maybe six in the morning um so at this point even though i technically have the money i no longer have the money so even if i wanted to use a bail bondsman that night which as chris just said we did not want to do the funds are no longer available so just by that alone he is forced to stay the rest of the night even though we have the money so at this point, then we're trying to find where he is. Uh, Chris's mom is, you know, I'm letting her know what's going on and she's calling and I'm calling. And we are both individually told by different employees that he has been transferred to Piedmont Regional. Piedmont is in Farmville, Virginia. And uh, that's not close by. So um, then I'm calling Piedmont regional which ironically they were probably the most the, helpful the most people. helpful and the easiest it, to get through and the, most, and the friendliest um, um but since two it's, rings, you know it's a couple hours away there was no way that chris <laughs> would have been booked at that point so um you know then uh it wasn't until later on because i thought okay well i guess i'll have to just wait a couple hours until he arrives and call them again it, and then it was when I got a phone call from like, uh, you know, it ended up being from Chris. It's always a strange number, like from Utah or Texas. That's how I know it's from the prison. And um, it was him trying to reach me. And I could hear it saying, an inmate is trying to call you from Pamunkey Regional <laughs> Jail. Pamunkey Regional Jail yes. is in Hanover, which is very close by. That's uh, where my folks live and everything. So um, I knew where that was. The 
you know, long story, but lots of those phone calls were disconnected with Chris. Very hard to actually contact him while he was at Pamunkey. But that was basically how I found out that he was at Pamunkey. Because none of the, uh, you know, cops or anything were helpful. So I'll hand it back over to you. But that was part of uh, the whole process. And then they had to wait uh, six hours after, yeah, six after hours. posting the bond for me to be released. And, they, and what? Two uh, shut downs? Right. right two I, lockdowns? Two yeah. lockdowns. Uh, and I, 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 they almost, they said that they were not going to release me because I said I didn't, uh, I didn't agree to any of this. I'm not, I'm, I'm not compliant. I'm a political prisoner. And I signed everything non assumpted And when they bonded me out, I signed it again. non assumpted I'm not a party to it. I don't agree to it. This is all, you know, a fabrication. And uh, I'm going to sign something, but I, I'm going to let everybody know exactly what this means. I'm not a party to it. And then they said, well, but we're just going to keep holding you in here until, until you sign it, or you're just going to go back. You're not going to get out for another, you know, six days. And I said, we have a, we have a caller. I want to hear this. Uh, but anyway, I said, fine, do it. But they, they did let me out. They were getting tired of me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Uh, they have given me a date, but again, they don't have any charges. They don't have probable cause. The, the, some, the, uh, they are holding on to my you know, property, which would exonerate me completely. And I just need to get my yeah, property back. And, 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 and uh, uh, you know, I mean, they put it out in public. And then press charges against against the criminals. I'm telling everyone what it is. We're t yeah, we're telling you. We're going to get the camera back. Oh, we're I'm going getting to press it back. I'm not telling you how. We're, we're going to press charges. Nine one three. Nine one three. Yeah. Hey, Dorsey, I got a question for you. Who's this? Yeah, I'm an innocent too. Hey, why don't you just hang up? Hey, who is this? Identify yourself. I didn't hang up at all. Yeah. Oh, that guy. Oh, is it a troll? Tired. What's, what's the area code? What's the area code? Was it 804? It's a I'll tell you when they call back. I'll just say the number. No, just okay. Anyway, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah so, 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 so I, I, I didn't agree to anything. Uh, I talked to folks and. No, 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 that's not local. No, no. We want local people. Yeah, yeah. We're okay. local right now. Yeah, okay. So sorry, we're local right now. Oh, so uh, um, okay, internet number. Um, uh, basically, and then and then uh, they stuck me back in a in a cell, you know, because I refused to sign, you know, sign anything that looks like Chris Dorsey. Because again, I don't say I'm called Chris Dorsey. I don't have a name. You know, for sometimes if somebody asks, well, what's your name? You know, if I if I go along, you know, I always say, I'm called Chris Dorsey. I'm called Chris Dorsey. You can call me Chris Dorsey. I know I'm a man and I'm one of the people, and I'm called Chris Dorsey. My parents say my name is Chris Dorsey, but they also told me Santa Claus existed. <laughs> so, so I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, nothing outside of me can, can prove to me anything else other than I'm one of the people. Chris Dorsey, that's... That's quite, you know, that's up to, uh, it's up to interpretation, and uh, we, th we'll get into that more later. But uh, basically, I said I, I, I'm not a party to this. I don't agree that I'm not willingly, you know, uh, shackled. I'm not willingly bonded. I'm not willingly set up. I'm not willingly allowing somebody to steal my property and uh, uh, and take my uh, uh, take my uh, life protecting uh, uh, and guaranteed. Um, Belongings, possessions, and and rights. So I I, I just I don't, don't comply. Yeah. I don't comply, and I didn't comply. So I'm not going to comply with their thing. Oh, I do want to say that the judge, he he uh he said we need to get your drug screening started immediately. So we're going to put you on probation before your trial. <laughs> I said as soon as I uh, I I I said nah, no, and then. As we're on the screen, I said, and we're going to get this video too. I'm under duress. I don't agree to any of this. I'm not a subset, and I'm signing this non-assumpsit.
because that's not how things work. They haven't proved anything. They, nobody's hit me with any charges. They can't punish you with probation. Yeah, until after they excuse. charge you. Yeah, yeah. And they haven't. They can't. Even, they couldn't even prove that. Right. They can't even do a quarter. They couldn't do anything that they, they can't did. Get a job the they, 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 they were violating the law from the beginning to the end. From the beginning to the end. No, they're saying they're they're making vague things about threatening statements and things that could be co possibly construed maybe, maybe this way, maybe as that something way. that would make somebody want to attack me or something. Yeah, this is the whole, that's the whole crux okay. of the whole thing. I, I do want to touch back on that J.C. Wilmore incident where that guy almost killed me, and there was an eyewitness that said we were all going to press charges at the time. It happened at the, you know, high-rise SunTrust Bank building in downtown Richmond, and this guy, the police and everyone else, because this guy's a lawyer and works for all the government officials as a, a political consultant, they... Uh, I had to um, call and videotape conversations talking with Richmond City Legal Counsel for them to even, you know, and I had to talk to about 25 different folks about 50 different times to even get them to take any sort of action against him at all. I went down to a magistrate, took out the eyewitness, went with me, she made a written statement, she made a, a verbal statement. And this guy actually almost killed me, and he never went to jail at all. And all he had to do was pay the hundred and fifty or so dollars. Yeah. To, uh, that was my bill for a uh, patient first. And and they had they went through two judges and two Commonwealth attorneys and four different uh, um, uh, times that they started and stopped the uh, the um, uh, prosecution. So I mean, when I say that everything's Showed up a fixed job, uh, corrupt to the core, 100 percent, and an absolute kangaroo court. I'm not saying this because I do a lot of research and I like I look at other. I, it's my own life. Yeah. It's my own experience, and the only re way that that you know they haven't done you know worse to me is because we have such overwhelming evidence that it cannot possibly be disputed in any way. It is. It is a fact. It is a truth. Like, uh, like the truth of the all in the, in the, uh, uh, you know, in the Hermetic Code. You know, the truth down to its essence. What? Of course. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try. Of course. Of One day course. I'm going to go on the war path, and they are dealing with well, the I mean, it's, now. Well, it's 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 not that 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 we're on the war path. Well, I'm, I'll speak for myself then. We're not, we just need the evidence back that shows, I need my property back, number one, Amen. but they had no right to steal, which was my body and my, uh, you know, my property, what I've worked for over my lifetime, my life, my property. So, I need my property back, number one, and also, my property will not only protect me, it will also be able to make get me compensated in every sort of way to show exactly what was going on with these crooks, these corrupt, dishonorable, I should say, because they don't have any honor, because the judge doesn't have any honor, the police don't have any honor, the, the, ma the, the magistrate is not a magistrate under the law, so we need to expose this. That's it. Expose it. And as, a, as the press, and I am fully request, re requesting the everything. But because that's the other thing that the Richmond police, they don't even comply with any of the FOIAs. I understand the that, but, but they better. Well, well, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. And okay. we're, we're in contact with, with a particular lawyer uh, through multiple third parties uh, because, uh, we're, you know, um, you know, uh, there's... There's not really uh, that many uh, folks that, that are, you know, bar, you know, members of the Bar Association that are going to, uh, 
that are gonna, you know, uh, um, help me out. I mean, that's that's basically that's basically it. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's total crook, you know, crook job, criminal setup, violation of every constitutional right. And uh, I'm not I'm I'm not a, a corporation. I'm not a fictional entity. I'm I I in a, a can you go grab that document, the, um, the federal court document? I want to show, and this is going to be real important. To, um, uh, the, it's the, there's there's one that's either in my wallet or or uh, um, also in, in the top drawer. So this is a real important uh, um, this is a real important document, and uh, if we don't find it, that'll be all right because uh, we'll get it out there. But the, I I um, was a party and and uh, filed. Uh, a lawsuit in a federal court uh, about uh, uh, against every election official in the state of Virginia, and uh, it was in regard to election fraud. So this was back in 2012, and obviously we all know about all the election fraud and, and about how all the um, the local uh, uh, voting machines have all been decertified and shown to be fraudulent and fake and and making up numbers. But anyways, we knew about that before 2012, but we did file a federal lawsuit in 2012. And in the memorandum uh, uh, document, uh, a federal judge, John Gibney, uh, stated in a, uh, in a subsection of his opinion that he states Dorsey, and he writes my last, the last name that's associated with my name, that's associated with my uh, being, I should say, to be exact, uh, prefers to write his name in all lowercase letters, so the court will follow suit. So um, they wrote my name in lowercase letters, they wrote others in uppercase letters, and so the court is documenting that I am separate, I am not an entity that, uh, uh, that writes, that's the court's decision, it does, that's, uh, that's what I know already, but the court is following suit which is their proper uh, course of action. So they write all uppercase letters, that's because they think that I've lost all my rights and that I'm a dead body that they can summon because they sent me a summons, but I'm not dead. I'm alive. And uh, what do you, I mean, what do you summon? What does somebody normally summon? A dead, a dead person, right? Demon. A demon, summoning a demon? I'm not a demon. I'm not, I, I'm not something that can be summoned. So, uh, I, I, and I, you know, I've gone out of my way to even separate myself from that, you know, all uppercase letter, uh, fictional entity in, in the, 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 um, uh, in the federal court to begin with. And the federal court, that's the federal appeals court. So that's the higher court than the one that's wrongly, knowingly, calling me by the wrong name and extorting money. So they just extorted a ransom money, they held me captain, they shanghaied me, and they got $5,000 for nothing. And they want to add more money to it. And they stole my property. And they did the bidding of their bosses and slowed me down for a few days so I couldn't expose their crime. That you know, and, cover it up. and, and that you know, this is all. Yeah, the confiscation is all a cover up of their crime. So, you know, um, I, I, I really, I, I really, yeah, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, I, I really don't uh, uh, see anything else other than another case. Don't don't worry about it. We'll just put it out later. Um, it's uh, it's out. I mean, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's lots of different places on the internet. That document I'm referencing, the memorandum court opinion of Judge John, John Gibney in the federal court case of you know, uh, um, uh, um, Shirley Harvey and Chris Dorsey versus uh, um, the state of Virginia uh, Department of uh, um, Elections and City of Richmond uh, uh, electoral board and and registrars. But anyways, that's where you can find that stuff. The, the entire thing is a setup. It, it has no basis in the law. It stems from the fact that we're all bonded out. We're all, you know, debt slaves. 
the bank's bond is out. I was put in bondage when I was transported. I was put in shackles. So I was shackled and bonded. And I was shackled and bonded for no reason. And framed and set up and injured and sexually assaulted. Yeah. And I would re I require compensation. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So like if somebody just accosted me off the street and threw me into a, you know, the back of a car and then made me undress in front of them and then threw me in a you know, thing and like rough me up. I mean those are crimes. You know they are crimes. And I think a lot I think a lot of people will look past this type of crime because you're a guy. You know, like it'll be, it's it's harder for some people to see or something, but I mean this happens to everybody. You know, I mean that this is happening to you, uh, more so because of who you are and what you stand for and I mean you are daily exposing corruption in Richmond and on behalf of the Richmond Police Department I'd like to apologize to you. No, they need to apologize to him. You don't. And your girlfriend, your friend, you know, but to, to steal the five, what was the five thousand dollars for, though? The bail. The that's, bail. That's the bail. That was that was the bail. That was the ransom, as Glenn yeah, was ransom. putting it. Because yeah, yeah. that's what it was. It was ransom. Man. Oh, right. And that's a violation of the Eighth Amendment. We were holding the United States Constitution. Oh, they also stole my Constitution and my Bible. So they're like, "What's in his purse?" It's my backpack. My my patchwork backpack. Oh, what's in his purse? Probably dirty, filthy stuff. Yeah, I think that they would think this is dirty, filthy stuff because it's the Constitution of the United States and it's the it's the King James version of the Holy Bible. So they do think it because they are they are the devil yeah. and they are the enemies of the people. They are the enemies of of anything that's good. And as I stated to one of the guys, it's ironically enough, one of the guys that was assaulting me was was uh, um was part and menacingly uh intimidating amanda while she was at home he was at his uh paddy wagon richmond police paddy wagon parked in my front yard when i was at home and amanda was home by herself and as soon as she called me yeah, i and one of the guy the guy that was doing that he was one of the guys who assaulted me and he's also remember i don't know if you remember madison i know some of the other viewers and and uh, listeners may remember i was assaulted by richmond police inside a church <laughs> uh at the end of oh the beginning uh yeah i think it was i think it was at maybe middle of 2014 but anyways it's got over you know 10,000 views of the, you know this guy assaulting me um i confronted the guy who was sitting you know menacingly intimidating my girlfriend inside our house although we didn't know that she wasn't intimidated but as soon as i found out and we you know uh like i said i'll be right there because i was visiting a, a dying friend um and in uh uh she went outside to take his picture and to confront him and he peels off and i got a description from some of my intel, which is some of the militia members in the neighborhood. And, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, we salute each other, you know, whenever we see each other. But he gave me the, he, he uh, was checking out the cop, and he gave me the description. And there's only one guy that meets that description. And so I confronted him. He was one of the guys that was in on this. Sorry. Chris, we have two minutes left, so I need to tell everybody where we can find you. Uh, uh, Richmond Peace at YouTube is the best place. Uh, Chris Dorsey on Facebook. The one with the picture of me standing at City Council looking, uh, you know, as, I guess as fancy as I can look. And uh, um, in the background, there's a picture of uh, the registrar of the Richmond, uh, 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 Richmond government, um, the voter registrar, Kirk Showalter. That one, not the one with the peace sign. Yeah. Glenn, where can we find you? Uh, you go to glensutphen.com. It's the best place that has all my information there. And I'm all over Fedbook. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. Do Google search Chris Dorsey and Press TV. Chris Dorsey and Press TV. Yeah. I'm most well known for something called International Banking Cartel. The International Banking Cartel. Because what I've been paid for, not that I get paid much, 
uh, over the past several years is I'm an economist on international television and a constitutional scholar and a civil rights activist. That's, that's what they call me. I don't call myself that. That's what they call me. So if you Google those terms and press TV or InfoWars or Before It's News, uh, you'll, you'll find Get the news straight. Get the news straight. Um, Constitutional Virginia Militia. Yeah, Patriot News. Patriot uh, News. Yeah. Um, there's, two, there's a lot of stuff we're all for affiliated with. Yeah. 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 It's been fun, and thank you for thank you, help. and uh, thank you, thank you, Madison. Thank you, for having us. thank you very much. As always, yeah. you are you are the, uh, among the greatest uh, of the uh, of the interviewers. Thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on. All right. Hey, thanks a lot. Well, okay. So, so that was uh, that was us on the radio. This is uh, get the news straight. We're now live and we don't have her so uh you want to continue for a little bit um yeah there was a, there was uh, there was probably there was possibly a couple more places but you know if they get there yeah, you know, they'll find as it. you get all the videos uh, together and read my article that i put out um like i said amanda had come over and came to me and follow they were followed you said they almost were followed and they followed you from there when you got max Yes. They, yeah, they, they did know that. That's yeah, they the followed thing. her over to my house. That's why I did That's why she came to my well, house. I didn't yes. stop here. Yeah, and, because and, I didn't want to stop And she went, I was in, I was sick. I've been sick and I went through all that sick. I should have been in the hospital, but I put it off to get my co-host out of the prison and away from the kidnappers. The, we had to pay the ransom. But road pirates is what I was calling them while, while this was all going on. Yeah, extortion road pirates. Is, this is, but this goes on every day. You know, I, we film it. We, I have video. We don't have the video of what happened. I am going to get it. We are. We are. Going I am to going it. to get it. Yeah. If I got to go down to I'm, the police station and sit my butt down there with InfoWars, without InfoWars, with the news, with the local media, the dodo fucking media that doesn't do any damn thing. Why don't they do anything? I contacted Kelly Avelina. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, well um, let, let's, let's get to Kelly Avelina because I did. Uh, oh, she, did she contact you? She, she didn't. Okay, okay, contact here, here's, you. Here's, here's one thing that's important, I think, is um, Kelly Avelino sent me a Facebook message and we took a video of us content. So okay. we, we videotaped everything. I did not have a camera today to videotape right. my calls to my my call secondary call to channel twelve and my second contact to channel twelve or six and eight. But uh, um, we uh, they I think folks know what's going on. Okay. Uh, no, but Kelly out we know uh, asked if I wanted they, they wanted they were gonna run a story about what happened and did I have a statement to make and this was on Thursday and obviously I was still incarcerated Thursday so I did not get the message from Thursday in uh, morning I, I got a message from Kelly Avellino Thursday morning asking me for a statement and this is Kelly Avellino Channel 12 reporter and also but that was before I contacted her okay. that was before I contacted her and I've heard nothing Oh no! I haven't heard anything back from. Uh, no, not, not, okay. Nothing from the damn dodo media. Nothing. Now I have heard from other people. I have my branch office in Puerto Rico. Right. I want to thank Miguel. Thank you very much. Uh, Telly Blackwood. Would thank you uh, very yeah, much. Thanks, thanks. Thank you very thank much. You, thank and, you, Telly Blackwood. Uh, giving a shout out to Axel Rotten, dude. Get better. Um. But yeah, we we do. I mean. We have seen, and, and that's another thing that specifically we videotape, is the close connection between the media and the police Please. department. Okay, yeah. all and, and every other government agency too. Well, yeah, well, because whenever, fire, fire. whenever a, jur a local journalist, a local corporate media paid propagandist, a paid propagandist from the corporate media on a local level, whenever they move to another job, it is always, always, as a spokesperson for the school board, as a spokesperson for the police department. Okay, spokesperson for the uh, school, Henrico County, Andy Jenks. Spokesperson for from Channel 12, now works for Henrico Schools as a spokesperson. Uh, um, Gene Lepley, 
former anchor for um, Channel 12 and local NBC affiliate. Now he's the spokes, uh, TV spokesperson for the Richmond Police Department. Whenever we see something going on, like um, like the, the media and the police, they plan this stuff together. Yeah, like the PSYOP, uh, the, the PSYOP known as the Ferguson crap that went on. I'm around. saying even locally here, they got the whole thing. No, I'm saying yeah. the, local, the local where they shut down the street and they worshipped them and bowed down and fell. They and said, hands up, don't shoot. And they surrendered, the mass surrender. Worship yeah. and bow down and then fall down dead. But what we did, what we did is we videotaped us. Giving giving legal lawful documents to the uh, uh, to Gene Repley, and I always ask uh, uh, the police, "Have you ever read the Constitution? You know that's the law. You know they all give lip service to that, but they are uh, they do the opposite of what the Constitution that says." And um, we just want to point out, the media is in bed literally mm -hmm. with with the police and other other yeah, government yeah, agencies. Yeah. They have sex with one another is what I'm saying if, if you can't really uh, uh, you know put two and two together. Yeah. Um, so that's that's what we're dealing with. And that's why they gotta have like the right number of homosexuals in both because you know you gotta and there's a, there's a high level of those in, in both, but it, it doesn't matter. They, they all have sex with one another, and they all get paid by one another, and they just extort, you know, uh, those, from those, that aren't those who, who stand for the Constitution, they're the number one targets. The reason they go after me so hard is not, and all of us so hard, I should say, the reason why they go after all of us so hard is because we were working the code. We're working the great hermetic code, you know, and uh, uh, and that's the code of the all. We're all a part of the all, and we're all a part of the creation. And so our number one goal is absolute truth and absolute justice and absolute uh, um, adherence to uh, to honor and and to uh, to serve to serve the grander scheme to serve not the grander scheme the great the greater plan. You know, because we're not involved in any schemes. You know, we're involved in furthering goodness, righteousness, and justice. So I'm there to getting the truth out. I mean, truth. truth. Okay. You, I'm showing you what's going on there. This is and get that, the news. And it's, right. it's irrefutable. When we put the when we put the truth out there, it's irrefutable, and we go at the top. At the top of every organization, we follow the money and we find the crime. And that's why they hit us so hard, because we're so effective. And we're not able to be bought out. And we're not able to be sold. And we're not going to sign our, our life away. Yep. And we're not going to agree to be complicit in our own demise. Or we're not going to agree to be good slaves. Because we're or sovereign. We're not, we're, I'm not a citizen. And I'm not a sovereign citizen either. The sovereign I'm citizen. Sovereign. Oh, that's what they were saying outside the the uh, um the uh, uh oh sovereign citizen. The, the hospital room about me. Oh, he's one of those. So he's a sovereign citizen. Sovereign citizen. Man, these guys don't even know the first thing about me because one of my videos on YouTube is titled "People Equal Sovereign, Citizen Equals Slave." Okay. So, so and, and there's a 12 minute description using only U.S. Constitution, Virginia Declaration of Rights, um, uh, a case law study, and Black and Bouvier's Law Dictionary. Sorry. So, there you go. They're thinking that I'm just like them. And I'm I, I'm opposite. Day. I do want to touch on the psych, you know, the further psychotic nature of the police and uh, the yeah, fact that uh, um, the, the fact that um, uh, this guy Bates kept saying to me, "Man, why would you have to do this to me, Chris? Why would you have to do this to me, Chris? I just wanted to get ice cream. I just wanted some ice cream." And then he would say that to the nurse. And whenever the co another cop would show up, he would repeat the same. I don't know why this guy's got to be so difficult. I, I was halfway there, and you got to make things difficult for me. I just wanna, I just want some ice cream. And the reason why I'm acting like somewhat erratic is because I'm an actor in every sense of the word. I'm a 
paid uh, Hollywood actor in a Steven Spielberg movie where I worked at the state capitol. And I'm a paid uh, uh, um, analyst on television, uh, which I also worked at the Virginia State Capitol. Uh, that's one of the reasons they said that uh, uh, they held me without bond because I said I worked at the Virginia State Capitol. And, uh, um, but I can verify, I mean, anybody knows anything knows I work at the Virginia State Capitol. And I get paid by YouTube for my work at the Virginia State Capitol. I get paid by DreamWorks, or I ha have gotten paid many paychecks in the past by DreamWorks for working on the movie Lincoln at the Virginia State Capitol. And I got paid by Press TV America, located in Washington, D.C., and in Tehran, Iran, for working at the Virginia State Capitol. So I have worked as a private contractor for how many? Three different entities working at the Virginia State Capitol. Which is our property, anyways. So, uh, okay. anyway, and, and sticking a good yeah. to a little point about the press TV. Press he was on press TV like two days, I think, before the. Uh, it wasn't. It, was, it that, wasn't that long. It wasn't it was, that long. It was maybe a week because I filmed it. Yeah, and we were on, and we were talking about police brutality police and brutality. and the corruption and uh, uh, come on. How did we have to paint a big damn yeah, picture for you? I mean, and if you ask me how I know, I'm the one behind the camera. I mean, thousands of people saw. I mean, like it goes on live on 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 television, international television, and then after it goes on international television, it goes on lots of different and all lots of different yeah. websites. Like we were saying. You know, before it's news, info wars. You know, they all pick up this press TV stuff, and I've made 50, 60 appearances. At least, I mean, you know, I'm counting Alam TV, I mean, which is also reaches three hundred million million folks. And on Alam, we mostly go after uh, foreign policy violations of the United States. And press TV, we do banking and yeah. domestic. Corruption in in, in uh, uh, and violations of constant, constitutional law in, in domestically in the United States. We've done international stuff there too, but that's right, and, yeah. and the past three appearances, three appearances in a very short period of time have been about police brutality, judicial corruption, Jade Helm, which is this is all my that arrest. Is Jade Helm. Yeah, this is this is Jade Helm operation. And then also Durham okay. said he was getting the guns off the streets. This is how he's yeah. doing it. Taking away from legal people, people doing right. nothing, and we'll trump up charges to get it off the street, but they won't take them from the damn criminals to kill people. And I do want to say something, and I hope I hope some folks are watching about this because you know, for all the folks that are in, in Virginia that give lip service to the uh, Second Amendment, I really, I mean, I'm really disappointed in you, and I, I'm going to look at the camera and I'm going to tell you I'm very disappointed in in all of you because you really haven't done anything for the Second Amendment at all, and you're really just liars to yourself. You're after your money, whether you're head of the you know Republican Committee of Hopewell, and uh, um, you know you got your uh, uh, you know little stitch up money you hand out you know from the you know from from the from the crooks, or you you or you're just getting jerked along, and you're going along with it, or or you're, uh, you know, calling yourselves, you know, Tri Cities Liberty Alliance and saying you stand for the Second Amendment, or you know, because I haven't heard from any of you. I haven't heard from any of you that uh, I've done open carry marches with. I haven't heard. I haven't heard from any of you. I haven't heard from any of you. And you know what? I think uh, I think that's pretty telling. Mm -hmm. um, and. Yeah. Either stand up now or shut yeah, the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. You really, and, need to, you really. But I do want to. I do want to thank Amanda here. Yeah, to thank be on God the show. for Amanda. And and you know. Yeah, uh, we are, I, I especially. We'll wrap I, love, it up here I love Amanda this. especially, and uh, um, you know, we do we do love all, and that's uh that's our code, and uh, um, and uh, uh well, we, we stand for truth and justice, and again, all those who pretend that they stand for the Constitution. You, the, you can't look me in the eyes anymore, and most of you, most of you know, you can't look me in the eyes, and that's the that's the worst thing that I, you know that I do to folks is I make it so that they can't look at look at me in the eyes, and uh, because they're really just pathetic, I sad human human beings. You're
your pitiful, your pitiful, you know, waste of a, you know, a human life and human potential. And you're, you're all just, uh, um, uh, living a lie. And it's not, you're going to get what you deserve. Yeah. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Yeah. Yeah. This is get the news. Yeah. This is get the news. Good night. God bless.